The Hong Kong New Wave started in 1979. During the 1980s, the film industry thrived as film came to serve as the primary source of entertainment. This film movement was inspired by Western filmmaking and culture as New Wave directors were educated under the Western film industry. The films of the New Wave lacked coherence and utilized new technology such as synchronized sound. Let's start from the beginning. The Hong Kong New Wave was named after the French New Wave that took place in the late 50s and 60s. When the filmmakers in Hong Kong first began to reorient their cinema, they used many techniques that were experimental. They tested out things such as personal narratives and even special effects. Now for some historical context. Hong Kong during the time was restructuring their economy and worked to transform itself into a center of strong finance. Hong Kong also prided itself on being the gateway to China and the place where the East meets the West. It therefore adopted much of the Western culture. Also, during this time, the 25th governor of Hong Kong put in place a series of reforms that worked to improve public services, the environment, housing, welfare, education, and infrastructure. This provided the perfect opportunity for the film industry to prosper. Some of the most important figures of the Hong Kong New Wave were Anne Hui, Alan Fong, and Yim Ho. All of these influential filmmakers started in their 20s and 30s and educated themselves on the topics of film in the Western world. They would then return back to Hong Kong and try their skills in the television industry before returning back to the film industry where they found their true talents. As this young generation of filmmakers came into the industry, they were more willing to take risks while using their higher education to portray film as a serious art and not just mindless entertainment. Anne Hui once said, In Hong Kong, in our generation that started out in the 1970s, being a director wasn't a big deal. We didn't have director's chairs. We weren't particularly well paid. The social standing of a film director wasn't that high. There's very little snobbery about one's position as a director. This truly shows the freedom and lack of strictness in the film industry during this time. Therefore, the production was slowed down as filmmakers focused on quality rather than quantity. This film period aimed at moving away from the previous karate and kung fu films to a wide variety of genres. Another popular influence during this time was Jackie Chan, a stuntman, producer, singer, and director. Now we will be discussing some of the major films during this time period, the first being The Secret by Anne Hui. This movie is best summarized as a love triangle complicates a murder investigation. For example, look at this clip and notice the creativity and experimentation she tried to express. Pretty cool, right? Next is the extras by Yim Ho, in which many classifies the film to start the new wave. He also created a movie known as The Floating City, which is about a man from a small fishing community who becomes a successful businessman. Once again, he uses a very different and experimental narrative story. Redhead. Look like a half-breed anyhow. The last film we will be discussing is Father and Son by Alan Fong, who won Best Picture and Best Director at the first Hong Kong Film Awards ceremony. He incorporated many new ideas on how success can be built in a changing society. His film Old Plow revolves around an old rice man who looks for someone to work alongside him when he buys a wife from Thailand and he is in for more than he bargained for. The Hong Kong New Wave is marked with youthful filmmakers turning away from the broad Chinese mainland issues and focusing more on the portrayal of modern Hong Kong society. During this film movement, filmmakers wished to keep the film local. The Hong Kong New Wave was characterized by its lack of organization. Now what that actually means is that the Hong Kong New Wave directors often did not have one specific common objective and many of their films differed greatly in their genre and style. This differentiation of films is due to their willingness to experiment. During the end of this time period, films began to shift into mainstream entertainment and moody dramas as directors fell victim to mainstream, highly commercialized film movements. 
The Hong Kong new rave is best summarized by Jackie Chan. Cinema reflects culture, and there is no harm in adapting technology, but at the cost of losing your originality.